there may be some promising news in the fight against breast cancer recurrence. And joining us to discuss that here at ASCO 2012 is Elizabeth Mittendorf. She's assistant professor in the Department of Surgical Oncology at the MD Anderson Cancer Center and the national principal investigator of the AE37 trial. Thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure. There's been a lot of interest in immunotherapies at ASCO this year. Um, how do you see that impacting what you're doing in the fight against breast cancer? I, I think it's a very exciting time for those of us who are interested in immunotherapy. We've had great success, obviously, in fighting cancer with surgery, chemotherapy, radiation. And what I think we're learning is that if we add additional agents that can modulate the immune system, it'll ultimately benefit our patients. And it really makes a lot of sense to me because there's been a long accepted premise that your immune system is initially able to recognize tumor cells and keep them at bay. But at some point, there's a process known as immunoescape, at which point the tumor cells can kind of outsmart the immune system, become established, and then progress as disease. So if we can use some of these exciting immunotherapeutics that have been discussed at this meeting and that many people are investigating to kind of tip the balance back in favor of the immune system, uh, that would be a very exciting development. Can you talk about your belief in educating the immune system to, to work against cancer cells? Sure, our group has been particularly focused in cancer vaccines. And when you talk about vaccines, there's many different formulations. At this meeting a couple of years ago, there was a lot of uh, news about Cipola Cell T, which is the only cancer vaccine to date that has FDA approval. That's a dendritic cell vaccine. There's been reports of whole tumor cell vaccines. Our group has been interested in what's called a peptide vaccine. And one of the reasons we've been quite interested in it is because it's an off the shelf kind of product. So you can take a peptide, mix it with an immunoadjuvant. It's a very simple formulation. It becomes a shot that is given to, in our case, a breast cancer patient under the skin. And what this um, uh, peptide does is it educates the immune system. So it teaches T cells how to recognize that abnormal protein. So again, in our case, we are trying to teach the immune system to recognize the HER2 protein. So when we give it a small piece of that protein, the immune system, if ever in the future, encounters a cell, such as a cancer cell circulating, that has the HER2 protein on it, the immune system can recognize it and basically lyse it or kill it before it would ever be able to set up shop as a focus of metastatic disease. Now, a vaccine that seems to have some promise uh, for you is AE37. This has been a trial you've been, um, you've been leading. Um, how would you assess where you are right now with that trial? So the AE37 trial, which we are reporting on here at ASCO, is going quite well. Our group conducted the phase one trial for AE37 and demonstrated this to be safe. Um, and it had a signal that there would be efficacy, meaning it did show that we were eliciting an immune response against HER2. So several years ago, we began this phase two trial, and the trial has been accruing at 15 sites. It's a consortium of academic and military institutions. And we've accrued 200 patients onto the trial. Um, the trial is continuing to accrue. It's going quite well. But at ASCO this year, we're reporting really our first look at the efficacy data. And what we found is that for patients who received the vaccine after a median follow-up of about 22 months, there appears to be benefit in that the recurrence rate in the vaccinated patients is on the order of 10% compared to 18.3% for those who are unvaccinated controls. So we're quite excited about this data. Um, we recognize that it's early. We recognize that it's phase two. But what I would suggest is that the data is promising enough that it's warranted to begin looking to the future for a possible phase three trial. Now, this is a hybrid vaccine. How does it work? That's a fantastic question as well. The majority of peptide vaccines that were initially investigated were what we call uh, CD8 eliciting vaccines. They were small peptides, nine amino acids. They were complex with an MHC class one molecule, and it taught CD8 positive T cells. Those are your T cells that can recognize foreign antigens, target them, and lyse them. But what the field kind of learned was that that response by itself is not enough. So we were trying to elicit help, and the helper T cells are the CD4 positive T cells. So like there's a epitope or a peptide that elicits CD8s, within HER2 there's one that elicits CD4 positive T cells. 
That's actually called AE36. But as you've alluded to, AE37 is a hybrid. And what's meant by that is we've uh, linked the native peptide to a small amino acid sequence that basically makes it more potent. And so what happens by linking it to this small sequence, it is complex more stably to the MHC molecule so that the immune system has a better ability to be educated by it. And this has been an important advance when we talk about CD4 vaccines because historically, one of the reasons they haven't worked is because they don't get presented long enough to the immune system to effectively educate the T cell response. So that's why this is a very exciting development. Are there... Um are there any future areas you think beyond breast cancer for this? There are in that there are multiple tumor types that express HER2. We commonly think of HER2 for breast cancer because first, breast cancer is a very common disease. We're all well aware of the HER2 positive breast cancer, which obviously Herceptin has been an important advancement for. But there are other tumor types to include gastric cancer, prostate cancer, ovarian cancer, some bladder cancers that do express HER2. Now, this brings up a very important point. Those tumor types express HER2 at a much lower level than what we see in our classic HER2-positive breast cancer. But if you'll recall, when we talk about HER2 positivity in breast cancer, we're talking about patients who have the absolute highest levels of expression on their cell surface. But in reality, although that's 20% of patients, there's another 60% who have lower levels of HER2 expression. So the exciting thing about this AE37 vaccine is that it actually looks like it may have a lot of activity in patients with lower HER2 expression within the breast cancer arena, which suggests it may also have benefit, as you question, in other disease sites that also have these low levels of HER2 expression. So based on the promise of this, you've gotten some interest in it. This is still an open trial? Right. This trial is still actively accruing at 15 sites. We do need to uh, continue accruing to reach our target number of patients. And of course, we need to continue to follow those patients for a longer period of time than this first 22-month median analysis that we've been performed. But yeah, there's a lot of enthusiasm and the sites are actively accruing. Very good. Best of luck in your work. Thanks for stopping by and and sharing what you're up to. Dr. Elizabeth Mittendorf, she is from the MD Anderson Cancer Center, talking about the AE37 trial here at ASCO 2012.